This problem comes from the Cambridge University entrance exam step. This is from step one, 1998. In fact, they don't do step one anymore. Anyway, let's have a look at the problem. Which of the following statements are true and which are false? Justify your answers. So statement one, A to the ln B equals B to the ln A for all A and B positive. Part two, cos of sine theta equals sine of cos theta for all real theta. Uh, statement three, there exists a polynomial P such that P of theta minus cos of theta is less than or equal to 10 to the minus six for all real theta. And statement four, x to the four plus three plus x to the minus four is at least five for all x bigger than zero. This is an interesting question. In fact, none of these parts here have very long solutions. They're actually quite short for each one. And uh, so if you've not done this problem before and don't have the answers immediately, do pause this and have a go. They're quite interesting. Uh, I'd say that this is kind of beginner friendly. I don't think this should be too challenging for anyone who is planning on uh, doing step themselves. Anyway, let's have a look at part one here. A to the ln B equals B to the ln A. Is that true for all positive A and B? Well, that statement is true if and only if uh, I can take logarithms on both sides and the equation remains true. So ln of A to the, uh, well, sorry, ln of A to the ln B equals ln of, a, uh, ln of B to the ln of A. But then that equation is true if and only if, well, if I just use log rules and bring this power down and this power down. But then on the left side, I've got ln A, ln B. And on the right side, I've also got ln A, ln B. So both the left side and the right side are equal. And so this original equation is also true as well. Part two is cos of sine theta equal to sine of cos theta for all real theta. No is the answer. I mean, I think any almost any value of theta would work here. Maybe there is a specific counterexample to this, um, or like a specific value of theta for which the equation is true, but definitely not true for all values of theta. Um, so if I just choose theta equals zero, for example, um, if I do theta equals zero, sine of theta is zero. So cos of zero will be just one. And on the right hand side, well, I've got sine of cos of one. And now cos of one, if you think about a cos graph, that's pi over two there. Pi over two is roughly 1.5. So cos of one will be somewhere there, um, which is whatever that value is. It's some positive value. Let me call it x. And then if I look at sine of x, well, x is between zero and one. So again, pi over two is there. X will be somewhere there. And so sine of x is going to be some positive number, but it's definitely not going to be equal to 1. So that equation is definitely not true. Statement 3. There exists a polynomial p such that modulus of p theta minus cos theta is less than or equal to 10 to the minus 6 for all real theta. Now, this one's a little bit more difficult because, you know, if this statement is false, which it is, um, you know, to try and find a counterexample, or sorry, we can't just find a counterexample like we have in the in the examples uh, in part two, sorry. Um, how do we prove this? Well, the idea here is unless P of theta is a constant function, then P of theta, as theta goes to infinity, um, P of theta will approach either plus or minus infinity as theta goes to infinity. Um, again, that's provided that if the degree of p is bigger than or equal to 1. And so therefore, once theta is sufficiently large, let's say theta is a million, p of theta is going to be very big, let's say 100, bigger than 100. And the idea here is, well, cos of theta is only 1 or minus, or like between 1 and minus 1. So the difference between p of theta and cos of theta is still going to be at least like 99. And so definitely not going to be less than or equal to 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so the only result then is if for this, for there to be any hope of there existing such a polynomial, is if p of theta is a constant um, k, but then it's pretty clear, right, if I draw a cos graph, if I take any horizontal line here, yeah, maybe this will be within 10 to the minus 6 for certain values of theta, maybe these theta values um, just to the sides of this point, um, but certainly not for all values uh, of theta, so because this distance here is 2, which is much greater than 2 times 10 to the minus 6, I'll always be able to find some point on this kind of sine graph, which is more than 10 to the minus 6 away from this horizontal line. So, for example, in this case, I could choose that point, um, like so. Let's look at the last part. So is x to the 4 plus 3 plus x to the minus 4 at least 5 for all positive values of x? The answer to this is yes. Um, how could you prove this? Well, perhaps you could do this by differentiation. I haven't actually 
bothered trying. But if you've seen things like this before, you'll notice that, well, if I subtract 5 from both sides, we're essentially trying to show that this inequality is true. Well, this inequality is true if and only if x to the 4 minus 2 plus x to the minus 4 is at least 0. And this might look familiar. This is, um, if in fact, if I multiply this by x to the 4, so this is true if and only if x to the 8 minus 2x to the 4 plus 1 is at least 0. And now this should look like um, a quadratic that factorizes very, very nicely. This is true if and only if x to the 4 minus 1 squared is at least 0. And since that is a real number and I'm squaring it, it certainly will be at least 0. And so therefore this inequality shall always be true. A pretty straightforward problem, but this is step one. Um, so today you just get step two and step three, which are a little bit harder. But if you are just getting used to this more advanced problem solving, these are the sorts of problems you definitely want to be trying. If you are someone who's looking to apply to Oxford or Cambridge in the future, do get in touch. I'm a full-time mathematics tutor. I studied maths at Oxford, now help students from all across the globe with their applications to Oxford and Cambridge University. And over 80% of my students end up receiving offers. So hit the link in the description below. 